For me, this podcast has a simple mission, and it is to act as a bridge between our generations. We talk about life, we talk about culture, music, their successes, their failures, their regrets, and their legacies. Okay, here we are again. My name is Midday. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Age to Age podcast. Uh, something I forgot to say in the last episode is your messages are very welcome. You can get in touch with us at age to age podcast at gmail.com. I welcome any messages and I welcome your insights into the podcast. Um, to follow on from the last episode, my guests are still the Olaleas, and the first half of the conversation has been just incredible. Thank you for the messages and thank you for just your feedback concerning that. Um, so they both go by Tony. That's Mr. and Mrs. Tony Alalea. Now, if you haven't listened to the first part of this, um, I don't think you'd be lost, but do try and listen to the first part of this. And for everyone else who has caught up and is up to speed, there's so much more from this conversation and I wouldn't take any more time. Let's get on with part two of the podcast. <laughs> Um, something I wanted to ask, and there might be a very simple answer, is in the decision to move the family to the UK, whose decision was that? How did you come about? How did you get to that decision? Because some of, some of the people watching and listening um, aren't just in the UK, they're everywhere in the world. But, you know, I just it might be interesting. And that's not something I've ever had to do myself personally. So I'm curious as to what okay, let me went start. into the decision. I'll start so you can say the rest <laughs> of the story. I'm a storyteller. But yeah. <laughs> well, she's a journalist. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> the thing is, the decision was actually his. Okay. He shared it with me, and I felt, wow, that's good. But then, it's like, he, he, also before then, we had this grandpa's best friend, may so rest in peace, yeah, Professor Adeogo. He said to us it was one BBC day, Master of Lagos. Yeah, he said to us that, he said one thing, he would advise us to do because you are having kids now said i would advise you the least education you, ghana you will give your children let it be in ghana because it was That's dbc it was dbc university of lagos wow you, you know he, he as a deputy in England, vice yeah. chancellor of university of lagos he knew where the, he future, knew where the where future the future of education and i remember one thing he told me again when we used to have sap in a soccer i used to argue for sap blah, blah, blah. And then he'll say, Tony, Tony, I'm sure if you make you finance minister. Like, you know, so now, <clears throat> now I'm saying, plenty bags like, and I think we'll benefit from the counsel of a lot of older yeah. people in it our sound, It sounds let like me, that. It sounds say, like that. Let me, let me finish this. Okay, Prof said, if at all you're going to educate your children, the least will be to send them to Ghana. Wow. That's where Nigeria. <laughs> but we didn't know about that. Send the least, send them out of Nigeria, Ghana. Wow. Okay, then, maybe that was like 1995. <laughs> So he started saving money that, okay, based on what Prof have said, so let's start putting money together. He, you know, he, he's a saver. Me, yeah, I'm a spender. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, he started saving money and we, we kept talking about it. Even at that, by that time, we we're not really thinking of, you know, getting out yeah, of Yeah, we had country. different options. Okay, remember? I, yeah, you go, know, go on, go on. So <laughs> for me, I was like, okay, if we have to go abroad, I did the um, American visa lottery, oh, okay. which I got. But then getting it is not enough. Mm -hmm. Or winning it is not enough. You need to, they need to Call invite you, the queue, you the for your uh, interview. And they were doing it batch by batch. Right. Okay. He was looking at Canada. When it was time for me to be called for the interview, American embassy said they've had enough Whoa. from they Nigeria. The quota, the the quota, quota was, full. was full. So everybody so go home. It was supposed to be my, you know, that number week. Number next. Yeah. My number next. When they, when, when they, they said, wow. I, I, didn't, I wasn't bothered. You know why? Because I had, a, I had already started a business. Right. Which right. for me was like, I didn't lose anything. So he did the UK, whatever, the um, highly skilled migrants. And that's the only way you could take your family, the whole of your family, abroad, you know. In one... In, you know, you, you don't need student visa or whatever. So he had to do the highly skilled migrant program. Yeah. That's what we got. 
you know. <laughs> Uncle just showed me the le- showed me a letter from. <laughs> By the way, something that um, I don't know if it will be captured on camera, but I'll take some photos as well. As Uncle's kept a very very rich dossier of history and letters <laughs> and pictures just of like his dad. It's so it's so <laughs> thorough and it's so like yeah, I love it. We were walking towards it, mm. but we didn't we know were where. Saving to us, we didn't know when. We know it was Canada or US or the UK. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, the idea preceded yeah, the, that's what I'm the saying. decision. So what they say about opportunity, something about luck and opportunity or whatever, you need to have a vision of where you're going. And yeah. that's what I want to leave with young yeah. people. If you don't know what you want. Yeah, you, when you see, you don't when you know. When you yeah. see that opportunity, you won't know when it, to So you go to, to the bus it. park. Are you waiting for bus 121, bus 307? <laughs> and in what direction? When we escape mm. London, you enter 121, it's going <laughs> in London. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to know that. Look at the bus stop like, towards Enfield Church Street. Or towards Cockfoss that. So one to one could go in either way. way. So either you got way. to know what direction you want going, to go. It, I, I, going. What is it? So um, prior to recording this, you shared the mantra, the family mantra yes. with me. It's in the paper over there, and yes. it just echoes exactly what you're saying now. Just proper, exactly. proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Yes. That <laughs> as a family motto, like, that's incredible. Yeah, this is, you know, what things when they were very young. This is it. You have wow. to. And that's why you know prior pola, planning. Pola, prevents Pins. poor performance. I told a young boy one day, I said, six Ps, and I, I read it out to him. And he said to me, I don't understand that. What's that? I said, proper prior planning. That's three Ps. If you want to do anything, you must be well prepared before you start that thing. Mm. And if you are not well prepared before you even start it, you're going to have a poor, poor performance. Poor, poor. So that's what it means. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So prepare for it. Even long before you will need it. When mm. I used to work in John so Holt in Nigeria, it. my manager, general manager, when people would come to work, okay, my wife born yesterday. <laughs> and you know, I need money. And my manager, my general manager said, your wife gave you nine months notice. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not prepared for it. You have nine months notice to prepare for it. How come your wife born yesterday, you can't come today, you can't ask for money. You never prepare for it. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so, okay, five daughters, you know, five first class. I'm proud and I'm grateful. Wow. But then, you know, it was like people were worried for for La, the youngest <laughs> that ah and we're when your older sisters have created you know but, but you see if you have a mantra like this yeah, yeah yeah it's a process yeah and that's what we tell people you know as they grew older after this we used to tell them about fishbone analysis oh are you, are you do you want to share with that no with that? he's the one that we shared that <laughs> he's the one that's always talking about fishbone, fishbone analysis, analysis you know fishbone so talk about no it. no that's it, it, i'm just in in in, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell basically yeah. it's like you're following if you play snake and ladder or whatever yes so fishbone analysis is a, is a strategic tool where you're trying to predict outcome and make decision so my life was with me about investment banking strategies like okay investors capital this capital how should we deploy this capital what should we do who should we hire who should how should we run this business you know do we go and hire a former soldier or do we go and and then so you plot well, I say plotting the you, so you plot your dots forward mm. so fishbone you start with the head you know follow this vein where does this lead to follow this where does this lead follow this follow the tail so once you've done all that and it's also what you do in credit when you somebody comes to the bank he wants to take a credit and then the guy says, oh, if you give me five million, I will build this. I will pay for some other tasks. We employ so much people. Da, 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 da. That's his wish. That's his desire. But That's if you now reality. commit, if you commit, exactly, if you commit people's funds, people's savings to that project and the money is lost and the business fails, how are you going to deal with it? Mm. So you need to think through every vein and see if it goes this way, what will happen? If this happens, what will happen? Then you can now, just like judges, they say in the rounds. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, we've had experience with home office. You know, in the rounds, you know, say, I am, the judge will now say this is the final outcome. So, <laughs> considering, uh, so fish analysis is like, if you're taking decision, run through the fish bone mm. veins or the bone. It's like uh, in project management, uh-huh, it's okay. risk assessment. Ex- yeah. Exactly. So, it's thinking through the entire thing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then doing your well, analysis. The end, goal. That. Yeah. end goal. Yeah, 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 end yeah. goal. Yeah, end goal. That's really interesting. And then we always had a family. Uh, Kobe was always uh, before <laughs> very early days. You know, everybody in this family read Kobe. 
What, what's, what's that? Stephen Covey. Stephen oh, Covey. Stephen. Oh. What's that? Oh, highly like, effective. Highly effective. Um, okay, there, there's habits seven habits, habits of, of highly effective, effective people. The first three, people. another three, and then renewal. There's highly effective okay. people, seven habits of highly effective family, Families. and there's habits of highly effective teens. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but They're basically like, the same. So you put, it was, was this a curriculum yeah, that yeah, the whole yeah, family went through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was, yeah, yeah that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Would you consider yourselves to be quite academic? I don't know if I'm back. I don't like the word academic. Okay. I'll tell you what. I go back to, you know, God created us in His image and, um, how do I say? It? What did they say? I'm not a good his pastor, but God created <laughs> us in His image and whatever. Yeah. God is wisdom. God is all knowing. God wants us to love Him, to serve Him. I be honest, mm-hmm. love Him, know Him, and serve Him. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's always about knowing what God's will is. So for me, it's like I'm saying. Oh, Mide is coming to do an interview. What's age to age? What's Mide after? <laughs> so, seeking knowledge. Proper, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, if you now say it's academic, I'm not academic, I want to play football. <laughs> yeah. And we say to people, we know a lot of young people that want to play football and their parents are struggling. I'm saying, no, no, no. Don't stop them playing football. Mm. But, what was the, the genius of Ant. Mm. So, we want to have this other mantra. Play football, but also go to school. Mm. We have some friends now that, you know, they're graduates and their kids also play. Because they might go to, like, just football. I said, you know what happened? Fish banality. If you play football and they break your leg tomorrow. That's it. Game game done. Wow. This is... So, so it's not being academic. So, so the family thing is like... And I think my father was a teacher. First of all, a teacher. Really? Yeah. He was, he was, he was a teacher, was headmaster before he went to the banking. And, you know, I'll say the story for posterity. My father... Went to primary school in Lagos. He had to go to St. Gregory's College. He was living with his uncle. Vincent, my grandfather, sent Simeon, my father, to live with Isaac in Lagos. Right. So Isaac was his guardian. He went through primary school in the St. Paul's, the Then he got admission to St. Gregory's College. He had to give up the opportunity to go to St. Gregory's College. And he went back home and they had to replan mm-hmm. and so he now went to St. Leo's Teachers Training College in Abel Kota he, he, he didn't take the it's probably similar to what he, he didn't go to Ubo Wash now went to <laughs> anyway so he now went to St. Leo's Teachers Training College but he was classmate with um, governor um, Otedo, Otedo. Otedola because okay. when so they're all you know so so that's that's stream so anyway when he finished his teacher training he was working as a teacher and headmaster at St. Benedict's Catholic church school in Oshobo. Okay. So it was on that job that he had an offer to come and work with First Bank. So he wanted to resign. And the authorities said, no, you can't resign. You're under a bond or something. Because I think part of his education thing was like, he would have to serve. I don't know the detail, but right. he couldn't voluntarily leave the job. So he continued his job as a teacher and headmaster. Then the banking thing came knocking again. But this time it was British and French Bank. Today's UBA. Uh, okay. And so according to my father, this is opportunity is coming the second time. Mm. The first time he was not allowed to leave. So my father, my father followed his wish. He left, you know. Anyway, so that's how he transitioned from being a teacher to a banker. But because of his role in family, he also ended up as a patriarch, taking responsibility for, you know. So what I'm trying to say that my, my young, my children, anytime they collect their scripts, anyway, so he will go and pick them and then they carry with their results. But they're not showing their results to Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. This, this what, you, you asked the question, are, are, are we academic. academic in this yeah. family? Okay. I'm, I'm not going to say yes or no. <laughs> But all I can say is maybe we're cerebral. So oh, we, have a, we, we love a good party, though. <laughs> so when, when you look at when the children, that's what I can say. I don't know about grandpa's history, whatever. <laughs> but from my own children, I noticed that grandpa had a great interest in their education. Learning, yeah. Right. And I remember. He once said, Olale means. It means go to school. <laughs> Children ask, what's the meaning of our surname? What's the meaning of Olale? He would just say, it means go to school. <laughs> of course, I'll, I'll be there and I'll be thinking, Daddy, mm-mm. But he would just tell me, that's what it means, go to school. <laughs> of course, if my father is saying, 
that's what it means. I won't say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So <laughs> his priority was education, mm. whether you're a boy or a girl. And being a teacher, mm. Mm, he really took interest in them. He had these benches made for them, you know, like a locker. Yeah. You know, all of them in his house. Wow. They will come after school, after school they will they sit down, that's why they do their homework. Wow. And yeah, I'll be like, oh, what's all this? Anyway, but for me, it was good. It was like, <laughs> it was okay. and okay, results day, I'll go to school, pick them. The guy that is sometimes will follow me, sometimes will not follow me to the school. But then I'll say, can I have your report cards or whatever? I'll be like, no. What the hell? Let me see. Who's paying your school fees? <laughs> They're not going to give me their reports card or booklet or whatever. Yeah, the, all the packages. And I'll be like, okay, we'll get home. Before I even park the car, they're opening the door. I'm like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Where are you guys running? They're going to grandpa's house. Wow. Grandpa lives next door. To show so, they will give, in fact, they will just dump everything on him. Wow. And I'll be like, daddy, I've not seen the results. <laughs> he will say, you'll see them later. Wow. I'll be like, okay. What's my own? <laughs> His daddy. His grandpa. Yeah. Then grandpa will just highlight some things. Do this well done, well done, well done. All they wanted was granddaddy's approval. Approval, wow. Not even mine. Who is who are you, mommy? <laughs> you know, then later on, grandpa will now say, Go and show it to your mom. Mm. Dad is not is not at home, he's at work. Come back until late in the evening. So go and show it to your mom. They will now bring it. I just look at that. I say, it's okay, don't really have seen it. I don't even care again. Yeah, yeah. But I was always praying that, ah, then I just should leave long ago so that it would just complete this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one that he has started. And anyway, that's how Desola, and you he, know, he, he, he passed away. Desola graduated in July 2018. Yeah. He passed away one week before Desola's graduation. Yeah. They always wanted to take that graduation oh, photo with grandpa, with grandpa at the back. Yeah. They always, so brought the gown, they, always, they always brought the gown. They always brought the gown back yeah, from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Anyway, so from those early days, they had this thing with grandpa. You know, in terms of you know spelling. Yeah. I know the youngest one of them used to <laughs> because grandpa would say, "If you spell so 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 thing, I'll give you one hundred naira." You know, as an incentive. Yeah. As an yeah. incentive, and. In my bakery. She wants to buy ice shop. cream. I <laughs> said ice cream. And she wants to buy ice cream. She used to take ice cream anyhow. Until one day I told my staff, I said, look, I don't want my children to be just to come here and take anything. Ask them for money. Demand money. Mm -hmm. So then my staff would tell her that, oh, that's all I, you know you cannot take ice cream. You cannot just go and open the freezer and take ice cream. It's my mommy's own. They said, no, put that down. Drop it. <laughs> then they will look at me. Ah, mommy. I say you have to pay. Wow. So the youngest one, that when she got to know that ah, now they have to pay for ice cream. <laughs> she will go to grandpa. Grandpa, I want to do spelling. <laughs> Whatever. Then she will, grandpa will wow. be like, Are you ready? Okay, spell hippopotamus. <laughs> she will spell it. One hundred naira. This is my daughter. She will make sure she spell like five words. So she can collect five hundred naira. <laughs> so and grandpa will give her. And you know, that that's, is industrious. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm ready to spell. Even when Gafa is not calling her to spell, <laughs> she's ready because she wants to buy ice cream. That you see now? is industrious. You know, so that's how all of them, they, they, even Lola, the first one, with fine arts, Gafa yeah, will buy her a lot that's of true. colored pencils. Even when she started using watercolor, whatever, yeah, wow. Gafa will buy everything. You know, he invested in their lives, yeah. their education. They are, you know, it's not only raising children to be, to be, you know, academic. Mm. It's a total formation thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to invest in the emotional, psychological, you know, physical, whatever. It sounds and that's what they have. And we, if we didn't, you know, have that kind of thing as well, if we didn't want to buy into that, then... Or we'll be raising children, yeah, or allow them to the friends, or allow yeah. our parents to. Because some you know. pe some people are the wary of their parents, you know, influencing. Yeah, but I, if people if people are wary of their parents influencing, that means probably they don't even know their parents or have good relationships. They don't even, they don't even know what values they can tap it, you know, into. You know, you know. For me, I know my father in law was like. I could, I could just leave the children with him. I know that they are safe. 
I know that they will come back and tell me stories, what Gary has told them. And nothing he told them that I would say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. There was nothing. So for me, you know, when you, when you want to say, oh, what are those values? I mean, when you were walking in NECA, when you send the those? driver, when you send yeah. the driver to the house to go and pick... Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> grand, grandpa, uh, he always wanted them around him. And also because I think, you know, for some parents, they realize they feel. Yeah, because he was also a very busy executive. You know, that, now that, 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 that they connects to your to question, do, yeah, so ahead. Uh, what they fail to do. It was, yeah, exactly. For yeah, their own their children. children. Yes, I think they so. They want yeah. to I, I think make, make up, up, for up, it. Yeah, up for it. Before they go back to God. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and wow. you know what? My father, too, was a handsome father hands of father mm. because he was busy with yeah. church work he mm. was busy mm. the only time we we would be scared of my father was when we hear the, the sound of his car <laughs> or or your mom says I'll report you I will report to my bed by day I'll report you to your father <laughs> Mama, when you hear that so there was a, a fair, comes, fair based relationship fair based yeah. relationship and you are not getting anything out of it mm. you they just put fear in you that that fear is such that even when they are talking to you, when they are even making sense, you are, you are like, so, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you don't even want to so, yeah. so you see, when you grow up in that kind of environment where, hey, see my bad day, why Jack back? Oh, can you go, you know, are you now hear the sound of the car? They're like, hey, 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 where is he? <laughs> he's coming. Ah, you know, he's not coming up now. He's still in his office downstairs. Mm. You, you just, you know, it's, it's not right. Mm. So when, if you grow up in that kind of environment, you now have your own children. Come on. You're not going to be like friendly, friendly, yummy, yummy with your children yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. But you know what you want. Mm. You know what you want to put in them. And if you miss it, because there's time for everything. Mm. You pay now or you pay later. I always tell time. people, when you're raising children, what do you want to see? I say, spend the time now. Pay now with your time. Or you pay later. Mm. And when you pay later it will be more expensive. Mm. It's like you want to do your exams. You're not reading. Oh, yeah. You can't do receipts. Kind of, you can't do receipts. You are paying more to receive that exam. Mm. Are you sure that you are even well prepared for mm. it? So it's more expensive because you should have passed once. You're not doing it again. How are you sure you're not going to do it again? Mm. And when you now do it again, you know, it's getting more expensive. Mm. And you may not even be ready for it. At the end of the day, that's it. And that's the thing with parenting. If you don't give your children that time they need now once it's lost it's lost once your child is seven but i understand okay. it's tough in this environment that's why i now think grandparents come in handy mm. look in nigeria house help each child can have one mate <laughs> yeah but yeah. even in nigeria that you have house helps yeah. mm -hmm. you still need a grandparent mm -hmm. figure mm -hmm. it's a, one auntie figure mm. to even supervise when you are not there. Look, there are, there are other women I of know. Of course, I know, I know people that their kids died in the hands of staff. Wow. There, there are no, women yeah. it's, it's I know, public, yeah. busy women, who also make time for their children. Mm. If that making that time involves just dropping those children with the grandparent and now hiring people, mm. so you know the women. grandmother is there and they are calling, hey, what's going on? So it's not enough to say, oh, I don't have time. Mm. If you don't have the time now, you, you have that time later and it's going to be expensive and it's going to be deadly. Mm. You know, so and at, the end of the that, day, mm. at the end of the day, what are you looking for? Look, you're looking for money to pay bills. Mm? Yeah, it's a very popular. Okay, money for bills. And you are overworking yourself. Your child is not seeing you. Nobody knows what you're doing. You don't even know. You know, some parents don't even know that the school has sent letter to them <laughs> to, to come for a meeting. Mm. They will still miss that meeting. Then the school will call again. They'll be like, ah, tell your child, did, you, did they give you a letter? Say, oh, oh, yes, it's in my bag. What is it doing in your bag? Mm. If you have a relationship yeah. with Check your child, you your child home. is coming from school. Mm. The, the letter will be in his hand or her hand here. Or you tell your child, even if you are busy, your Always child is not going to see you before your, your child goes to bed. Mm. Okay, whatever I need to see, but drop it here. On the dining table, mm. so you can always, you know. You know. So, but you see, it's, it's and, and also, parents, we only give what we have. You cannot give what you don't have. Absolutely. If, Absolutely. A, if a child comes to you and say, oh, daddy, 
I need 500 pounds. And you know in your account, you have only 200 pounds. Where are you going to give the child mm. 500 pounds? So you can, even the 200 pounds you have, you cannot give that child. You say, oh, what? By 50 pounds. I mean, not even money-wise, even emotionally. Exactly. It, so it, that's it totally. Like, yeah. like, like I told you, the total formation. Yeah. It's, it's all inclusive. Yeah. You only give what you have. You cannot, mm. like, you cannot get orange juice from an apple. Mm. It's what you squeeze out. Some, some, some of it, do you think, or do you agree that some of it is also, so it appears to me that you're very blessed in the sense of the village that you had around exactly. you, especially when it came to raising kids okay. and everything else. It appears to me that some of the uh, pitfalls that some of the parents that we're describing fall into is if you, without a village, it becomes insurmountable. Like, oh, there's yeah. only so much you can yeah. do. You if, know, if, if, for example... In, in finance, they call it ecosystem. Once you raise funds, venture capital, they, they exactly. have an ecosystem. E- exactly. So, it's not, you know, the British society is about, I'm moving out at 18, I'm on my own. It's dangerous. You yeah. need an ecosystem. Exactly. So, so before that child moves out at yeah. 18... That child has not gotten anything. Mm. That child is not, has not received character, the, the, the character mm. formation he or she needs. Mm. But you know, people just think that, yeah, you'll be fine. You can't be fine. Yeah. Even I have children who are married today. They still come and ask me, it, mommy, what do you it's think? It's very simple. Mm. In finance, startup capital, everything. You need ecosystem of venture. You need yeah. e- ecosystem. So the same thing. Yeah. You need ecosystem for raising a yeah. child. Now, yeah. I don't know what the composition would be, but it's not the state. The state can help you, but... Yeah, but it, it's like the the adage of I don't know if it's an adage or proverb, but you, it takes a village to raise a child. Correct. It's, yeah. and I think it's you know it's just as valid. So, okay, there are two questions that I like to ask in um, as, as part of this podcast, and one of them is kind of left field, and it, it will come out of nowhere. It will seem like <laughs> you grew up in a vicarage. Yeah. What do you remember? What the soundtrack was like? What sort of music were you listening to at that oh period my in God. your life? Soundtrack. <laughs> Me. It's all gospel music, <laughs> church music. Well, who was who? Today. Like like what? Like who? Ha! Huh. Oh my God! There's one that mm. you know, Balare. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. You know, Balare. Then this woman, I can't see, remember see, her see, name. Good, good women choir. <laughs> yes, all those ones. The, the, yeah, our daughters you bought know? us a ticket to go and watch yeah. the, uh, the, the good women choir. Yeah. Really? Yeah, wow! Christmas wow! Also. For me, to be honest with you, even up till now in my life, that's all I do. <laughs> it's Balare. Oh, I do not so Oh wow! 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 All those. Yoruba music, even in the car. Really? Wow. Or if you're lucky, they play Jim Reeves sometimes. Jim Reeves? <laughs> you know, that you know those. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so today, till today for me, that's what I soak myself. Really? What's, yeah. what, what about you? What kind of soundtrack was Except, that? except sometimes when it takes me to the pub or somewhere. You know, like that but that one's I'll just be like, <laughs> I just be looking. The, the, the look. music I listen to is reflected. <laughs> In the life of my daughter, the the curator is Desola, my Desola. fourth daughter. Okay. So Victoria, yeah. Oh. And um, well, all the Orlando Julius. Yep. yep. Whatever. Sonny Ade, you know, Sashino Sh- Sh- Peters. Because you, know, uh-huh. you know, okay, <laughs> when my father was area manager in Ibadan, his office was in Dubai. For those that know Ibadan, and we're living in Jericho, and. If there was a new release, then there were LP or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. What do you call acrylic? What do you call this? Uh, so, yeah, vinyl. By vinyl, yeah. <laughs> so he would always come. So when he's having lunch, he's playing those music. And then when we had our kids in Lagos, when we were living here, we were living in number ten. Grandpa was living in number twelve. Wow. So Grandpa had, and that's why. Two of my daughters have Busola and uh, Fola. They have this gramophone thing that. Oh so wow. They still buy uh, vinyl. Still. Yeah. So. Grandpa's collection he was, always, he was always playing his collection. So his collection influenced yeah, the kind of music. And yeah, yeah. 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 Grandpa yeah. and his friends will come, you know. Yeah, and then they had, around, yes, they yes. Will, they just and then Grandpa had one favorite um, artist that one man band. Grandpa oh. was a party man. Really? So, La Kukoka. So anytime <sighs> we're having a party or whatever. And I remember my wedding, you know, and Grandpa invited the band. I can't remember which I tried to do for Lola when Lola got married. So I also brought, I called Solek. Lako Koka is a one man band. He plays, you know, all those. And, High life. And then pa- Papa um, Campbell, um, Tunjo Yela, no. All those, you know, those are the music I grew around with wow. from my father. Yeah. Well, you said when you when you would go to the club and then you would. Yeah, you know. Who, who, is, who is on the radio? Like, what, what, what music is that? No, it's, it's a great club. <clears throat> like, Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool in the game. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Or even here, let's say here, we we'll go to one of my friends. She has a echo, restaurant. Echo, echo restaurant. restaurant. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah, there. There's yeah. a live band. Right, you know, right, right, right. They right. those kind of music. You know me. 
I'm not that kind of like dance. But sometimes they would tell me to go and dance, I would dance. But you know, I'm not dancing to gospel. I don't like the church music. <laughs> but it's still okay. So I yeah. want to know where at least yeah. you know, she yeah. just go and dance to yes. that kind of music. Yeah. I then I, I love uh Ayefele, uh Ay uh <coughs> you know. Old or Old in Kaifele or more recent? Ah, I don't know if you know or new. Well, for me. But I remember when we met Toy, when we were dating, Shino Peter was the infant. Oh, yeah. You need to see this woman dance to Shino yeah. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're, you're, you're yeah. you know, and then uh, she, was, she was a couple of affairs yeah. officer for what company, and yeah. they had a couple of events. She was the one that always invited you know, Peter. And then I remember too when I were Coca Cola, uh, Femi Pears, uh, Whispering yeah, Palms. Pears, oh. yeah. So they had some concert, and then Coca Cola. So we went, you know, and then Shino Peter was, you know, Shino Peter was, that, that was, he was the, he was the guy. Yeah, when yeah. we were dating and stuff yeah. like that. So, Orishino. Uh, uh, Ijoshino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Joey, oh, that, that, And when it came to London. You're living in the churchyard. Uh, Your friends are dancing to you, too, you have to dance. <laughs> And then so, he came to London, O2, and yeah, I went to, to see London, him. Yeah. Yeah. It was the week oh, after that my father passed, you know, oh. I remember, yeah, yes. It was the day after. When it was the day after. Sunday, we went to Shino, Shino Peter. Shino Peter. Sunday. <laughs> Monday morning, that did love. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can talk to you forever yeah. <laughs> because we haven't even spoken about we haven't spoken exactly. about uh, your marriage, which is an area that I rarely get to talk about because, again, like I said, this is the first time that I'm speaking to a couple together at the same time, and um, <laughs> although it's been on show, the dynamics between the both of you, it would still be great to sort of explore the inner workings of how your marriage yeah. is what it is today. But there's a, another question that I I ask a lot um, uh, on different episodes of the podcast and. Might be sensitive, but I'll go there anyway and see if you follow me there. What would you say is your biggest regret so far, if you have any? In marriage. In in life. In life. So in the, in the number of years you've been alive, what would you yeah. what would you count as a regret that you know you have? I can't think of. Well, I don't know. I don't know if to say in my own situation. Maybe. If I look at it from my mother's death, like, okay, I regret that my mother cannot see what I have become today. I regret that she, she can't even see her grandchildren, see how well they are doing. So for me, that's a kind of regret. But I think when we talk about regret, maybe it comes from what, the mistake you've made in life or something. But in my own situation, I think I can't think of any regret because I'm not regretting the fact that oh, I got married to this man or... You know, we'll do it again. I left, <laughs> I left my business to come and sit down with That's the children. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see that as a regret. But you consider anything. those tough choices you had tough to make. Tough choices, yeah. But the only thing I feel bad about, I, maybe I, I shouldn't call it regret, is that, oh, my mom is not here. Because I'm sure she will be happy mm. to see me, what I've done in my life, and she will even be happier to see my daughters mm. and what they've been able to do. Mm. Because as an entrepreneur herself, yeah, that's true. she'll be like, wow. Yeah, she'll be proud. This is, I can imagine. She'll be proud. I can so imagine. for me, that's just... I can imagine. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. imagine. I, will, I don't know. Regrets? I don't know. That's a tough know. question. Because yeah. first of all, you know, our value system is about gratitude. Yeah. Um, there's a popular phrase in one of my faith teachings, is omnia in bonum. You know, all things for good. Oh. Omnia in bonum. Wow. That's, you know, everything is for your good. Mm. Um, so, right now, I'm going through, you know, a difficult patch with my father's estate. A lot of people have cancelled in certain ways, but the love and respect I have for my father is conflicting with those counsel is like you know there's also say you don't give a house dog the food of the children yeah. so this face will blow away but I don't know what the outcomes will be mm. but because of my values I will take some action right. now to specifically answer your question which is what I'm trying to say I believe everything is for the good mm -hmm. so Regret is not something, and then some people also say failure is a condiment of success. Mm. But on reflection, when you post, when you post that question, while Tony was responding, I had a quick search in my brain, my God, and I, I'm, I can tell you now that 
the regret I have has to do with devaluation. Now, this may be a bit tough for people who don't work in finance or who don't understand economic whatever. And I'll put it very simply now. In 2007, when we came to this country, because I came in a highly skilled immigrant program, it was my income or whatever, my savings, my investment and stuff like that. We will change money. We will change one million naira. We will get 4,000 (laughs) pounds. The exchange rate was 250 naira to one pound. The exchange rate today is 1,140, 1,120. So if I change one million naira today, I will not get 4,000 pounds. I will get 1,000 pounds. If you're lucky. (laughs) Now, this has happened to me now in 2023 at 61 going to 62. It happened to me in 85, 87. For my 25th, so, so, and that's what they say when history repeats itself. So, after my MBA in 85, I was on about building a business, you know, and stuff like that. I was doing pretty well, relatively. And I had a goal for myself that my 25th birthday in, in 1987, I'll buy myself a brand new 504 SR. Great car. Yeah. The... The SR was going for 11,000 Naira then. I had saved 9,000 Naira. I was short of the target by 2,000 Naira, you know? So I wanted to treat myself for my 25th birthday. I'll yeah. buy myself. I always say, oh, I want to buy myself a Bentley for my... Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So, you know, when you're doing business, you set goals, you know? To, you know yep, so, yep, so, yep. so that was the goal I set for myself. But Nigeria happened, as they say. <laughs> I, do I don't like regrets, they, but they you know, so, so, so when you say Nigeria, so, so when you say, when you say regrets, it's not, it's not that life is all rosy. And that's why I yeah. started with my current predicament. Mm. And I'm going back to, okay, to answer your question that, you know, something is repeating itself. 85, 87, I was not able to buy that car because the price now shot from 11 to, um, I think about 90,000 because the Nigerian currency was devalued wow. or whatever, Buhari and everything <laughs> and stuff like that, structural adjustment program, you know. So the currency used to be like 22 naira to a dollar. Now it's about 9.50 to a... So, but then I couldn't buy myself the present I wanted for my 25th birthday. And I felt that, oh, I'd learned all the lessons I, need, I needed to learn about finance and investment, you know, because I knew I had a big family, relatively five kids, you know, I wanted certain things for them. And I knew, so which is also why, for example, I, Paula Laleye, and my, tour, and my wife, tour, we have only one plot of land undeveloped in Lekki. Undeveloped. I worked in the bank. I mean, I could have, I could have built up houses in, in, in Nigeria and stuff like that. But I knew what I wanted, proper planning. So we had this account in City Bank and stuff like that, you know. So, and then we did, okay, we went to Tarry Town in New York in 1998. Mm. So we did a financial planning session, you know. I don't know, I, I, I had the workbook for the outcome. <laughs> so they, what we wanted to know was how much we needed to save to be able to educate our kids and stuff like that, you know. So for me, investment and savings have all been very important. Mm. Now, after that experience of 85 to 87, I shouldn't have been caught again in this situation. Mm. So maybe my naivety or patriotism is costing me a lot mm. financially. Mm. I could easily have moved all my money or investment into the UK in 87. But because I believe in enterprise, I believe in Nigeria, I, 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 I'd rather not talk about things like this. <laughs> but to be honest, when you ask the question about regrets, you know, that's the only thing that comes to mind. So mm. I'll stop at that. Sure. Sure, I understand. <laughs> Following that theme, <clears throat> that's very sensitive what you what you just described, and I think it's a lot of people might not understand the relevance or why that's a regret. But I, I understand what you mean. What well, following your ethos of pay now or pay later? <laughs> what are some other sacrifices that you feel? Because in my estimation, both of you have been successful quite early and for a long time. Certainly, in the lives of your kids, it's very easy to see your success live on in them. What are some of the sacrifices that you feel have made that possible? What were the, some of the, what were some of the things you paid then that you feel like is that <laughs> you know 
<laughs> when you talk about what, what are the sacrifices, you know, we always tell the girls this as well, is delayed gratification, you know. Right. You know, in life... Mortification. Yeah, mortification, whatever. Um, you have to know what you want. Hmm. If you know that's what you really want, and you're, you're confident that that is what you want, you have to understand what do you need to do to it's, get it's that. It's called economic uh, opportunity you know. cost in economics. So what do you need to do? What do you trade off? To get, yeah, trade off. So The trade off for us. For us, the trade off <laughs> for us to get to where we are now is a lot. We trade out of, I'll say this, better life in Nigeria. Because he had a good job, had a very good business, thriving business, well-known business. It's a bakery business. I was supplying supermarkets all over Lagos. A well-known brand, Tito. So, to trade those things off, to sacrifice for the future family, of the yeah. children. Yeah. Mm. Mm. To just sit in the house, drop them at school, wait till the afternoon, not when do anything I from this, a very active... You know, I was very active. I, woke, I used to wake up around... I used, first of all, I used to leave my bakery at about 11.30 p.m. Wow. Because some people are still coming in to buy bread yeah, yeah. or <laughs> something like that, you know. Then I'll still wake up very early to around 3 a.m. Mm. to start the day. Because wow. we had to supply some schools. Snacks, yeah, breakfast, yeah. breakfast. Spring, springs, like how, how were you doing that as a mom of... Well, the, the support, <laughs> support system, of ecosystem. grandparents. Wow. Mm. Which some people don't want today. Mm. Some people don't want today. They don't, I, don't, I don't want my mother in love. I don't want this, I don't want that. But you know what? I always tell people. The benefits are more than the pain. close to my parents-in-law was a great gift mm. for me. Because... I could go. My there were difficulties, See, but then it wasn't. It wasn't my father in law sometimes would come and meet me in the bakery. Mommy, T, I've not seen my children, they're not back from school. I'll be like, oh my God. I'll start calling the drivers. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, are you? oh, yeah. oh my dad, they said go slow. Ah, I did go slow. Go slow. Grandpa would be like, I'll Mama say, okay, daddy, I'll go and pick them now. He would say, Ma, 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 Go on with your work. Ma, I'll go and pick them. Wow. Maybe halfway. To the school, the megad is already coming with the children, and Baba will say, "Thank you, give me my children." The megad will say, "I want rich house." Why? Why does he want to rich house? He wants to get bread. Oh, it's okay. And my father-in-law will give him money. So what I'm saying is this, you know, trade for off. me, yeah, trade yeah. up. It's mm-hmm. like I was still operating near my father-in-law, my business. The children's school was like, how many minutes walk from the home? Everything was just around the same mm. place. I still forgot that they were not back from school. But the man who is always looking forward to his grandchildren's arrival from mm. school was like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Like, but for me, and he would say, continue with your work. Don't worry. That was, for me, it was, it was, relief. It was a mm. great relief. Mm. Now, leaving that... I had drivers. You jump on the bus. I had drivers. Traffic on the A406. I, I could drive, but I wasn't driving. I had drivers. If I wanted to drive, it's as if, okay, I had to go and deliver bread or cake before the staff, you know, arrived. So I had to go very early, take the thing myself. Or if one driver is absent, then I have to get the other one. Or one supermarket wants Or one supermarket wants, you know, I have to just do it. But then it was a good life. Mm. I left that. I came here. <laughs> I remember my fourth daughter, this all asking me. One, maybe we've just spent only two months here. And I think that game must have been like, what about this? <laughs> then she asked one day, we are out at the bus stop. We were waiting for the bus. Then she now said, Mommy, I want to ask you a question. I said, What? <laughs> Why did you and Daddy bring us here to suffer? I wow. said, eh, your mates are happy they are in London. Why are you not happy? I said, mommy, this is not a good life. This is what? not the life I know. I said, but you know what? It's a sacrifice. I had to tell her, fine, I understood her, you know, where she was coming from. But then, at that moment, if I did not answer that question correctly, I lost her. Maybe mm. she would be a different person today. First of all, my reaction was, what's wrong with you? 
You are here in London, you are saying you are suffering. Of course, even deep down, even me from the first week I arrived in the UK, I knew that, ah, I'm on the <laughs> But you know what? I quickly, you know, mm. you know, forgot about it. I said, I'm here. This is a sacrifice a purpose, I have to yeah. make for my family, mm. for my children. Mm. And to be honest with you, it took me, we came in August 2007. It took me over one year before I surrendered, before I accepted, your I accepted that, yes, this is my faith now. Why? How did we get there? He was not around. I was with these children. School runs here and there, parents' evening here and there. And I'm like, what kind of life is this? Mm. First of all, I'll take them to school in the morning. Make sure everybody got to school in the morning. By 9 a.m., 9.15, back at home, there was nothing for me to do. Where we were living then, I'll sit by the window. Just that. I'll be watching on the bus, all, the, all the bus coming up and down. Then sometimes the people that want to fix the street lights, <laughs> I will watch them from the beginning to the end. I'll be like, see my life. Me, a old Tito, what am I doing here? You know, I had an option, either to be getting angry mm. with my husband and couple with the father, some people will be calling me that, ah, Tito, I saw your husband, no. I saw your husband, mm. some people will call me and say, ah, you know, your husband has a girlfriend. I say, even with gossip, I say, good luck to him <laughs> and the girlfriend. But I knew that it was a lie. He was, mm. He's not that kind of person. Mm. So, you know, you know, people just want to destroy your life, thinking that you're a fool. You have so much going for you, mm. and you abandoned it because of what? Send your children to to, to the boarding house. Body house. Your husband has the money. I say, I know we have the money. We have the money to send them to boarding house. But you know what? We believe in something. Mm. I, for one, I wanted to raise my children together mm. because to give it's easier to put them together and give them the same values you want than for them to be scattered all yeah. over. That's what. Then tem- that's the temptation. They, they will not come from their, their different, different schools. Yeah, perspective. Yeah. You not be you not be seeing different. Ah, um, this one will be showing you this. That will show you this. <laughs> you not be like what's going on here. So for us, okay, big sacrifice. I I said it took me over one year. I will not lie. Let me say it here. Some mornings, even after dropping the last one at school, as I'm getting on the bus, I'm crying. Mm. I'll be crying. You see some people say, are oh, you all right? You all right? Everything okay? I'm, I'm okay. Leave me alone. You don't know what I'm, what was going through my mind. I'll not enter the house. Just sit down. Do nothing. Just be watching. Cry, cry, cry. Sometimes I'll be like, why did my husband do this to me? Then my staff will be calling me. You know, supermarkets will be calling mm. me. Oh, we've not seen your driver. We've not been giving bread. We've not been doing... I'll be like, what's going on? Are you, are you people okay? Then I started thinking, okay, maybe once I drop the children at school, I should now sit down at home and call the bakery, ask what's going on. Is I'm going to be crying. <laughs> <laughs> she used to carry two phones. And some people in London thought as you were crewmates. She was like, yeah, I two phones. Yeah, I used to carry two phones. The MCI, the customer was trying to reach me. Of course. The, my EE or team of right the school was calling or not. Then somebody, somebody asked me one day, oh, how come you got two phones? You must be a drug dealer. I'm like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. And I, I didn't even have time to be explaining to them. So you see, I, that, the, 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 up until the time I said, look, I surrender. I accepted. That that's my faith. Like my the, yeah. vocation is family first. Mm. It wasn't that but I wasn't, you know, being responsible when I was doing my business. Because I was still on top of the game, you know. But with support. It, it, with support. But there's no support but yeah, system. There's yeah. no support. Mm. So, but so that's why migration is tough. And that's all day, this jackpot thing and stuff like I, that. Even the day your I migration is decided tough. decided that, okay, forget about the bakery, focus on the girls. Mm. <laughs> there was one day. I called them. I called the girls <laughs> because I was very, very tough on them. Really? Because you know why? But I was like, your father, your father <laughs> put me in this situation. But and I now realized that they were withdrawing from me. Mm. They would just be like, oh, mommy, good afternoon. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, food is ready. Yeah, they will eat. They will do it. But then, not that they were being bad, but I just noticed that everybody was just doing their own thing. 
So one day, the moment I decided to, okay, let me focus on these children. Let me forget about the baby. Whatever happens, a child that is yet unborn, we, we set up a bakery. Mm -hmm. Why am I killing myself? And the bakery is on, the staff are there. My husband was there. So let me just focus on the children. Because if I, if I miss the opportunity, because mm -hmm. if I miss the opportunity to focus on these children, like I always tell people, pay now or pay later. I, I have to borrow myself sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I called them. I said, oh, you know, we have a meeting at St. Anne's tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. That, you know, it's your solar's meeting. That I'm looking forward to it. And your solar's looking at me like, <laughs> anyway, I said, well, we'll be there early. What time is the first meeting? He said, oh, 5.30. I said, okay, we'll be there early. But you know you, you have to come home, make, make sure you get home before I leave the house. You know, oh, we, we shall have that meeting. And I said to them, I said, look, I want all of you to do well. I said, you know that as your teachers are marking your scripts, daddy will mark my own. <laughs> because if you fail, that means I have failed. So my own teacher is daddy. That will look at it and say, okay, why did you not do this? Why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? So, so now, we have to pass, so all of us have to pass. Collective agreement. Yes. So they were looking at me like, mm. <laughs> but mommy, we have not done anything. I say, I know, but just going forward, let us all make sure that we, all we do well. And they agreed. I would look at their homework. I would say, when is it due? Two weeks' time. Start now. You should go and print at yeah, Palmer's Green. Because then he has not bought printer for us. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, would, I would give them a USB. Oh, yeah. Put save, your, homework. save your homework here. Even though it's not due, I'll look at the homework. I'll edit, you know. That's I, another, I'll thing, my... another thing we used to do is like, uh, when you have a homework, start the start day you're now. giving. Mm. Yeah. Open a page, homework, start like, it. and start. Don't, don't procrastinate and leave it to, oh, okay, I have time. So when, mm. when they say, oh, the homework is due in two, two weeks time, it's okay. We walk towards one week. So I'll look at your homework. I'll edit it, rearrange things, and, you know, at least thank God I met you, I went to school. <laughs> so we we'll look at it. Then I'll when they now you know finish it, do all the correction, I'll now take it to the library, Palmer's Green Library, to go and print. I remember I met a man there one day, the staff his of staff. The and he asked me, You always come here. What's going on? What's, I said, oh, my children's homework. Oh, I said, I have a lot of girls in my house, you know. He said, wow, that's your good parent. You're doing this. I remember that homework I wanted to print that day. I didn't pay for it. Wow. He said, yes. He said, he just told the guy that would print. He said, just print and let her go. Wow. As I was leaving the library, I was like, wow, 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 wow. Subsequently, I went there again. The man would tell me, anytime you want to print, just, just, wow. just he told me, he now took me to the printer. He said, just, this is what you need to do. Just print it and that's it. But you need to send it to someone, you know. But the then person. the coronary of this is like, there was once, one of our daughters took printed homework to school. One teacher was being difficult. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Yeah. Because the teacher said, why did she know? Handwrite. Handwrite. Mm. And there was, you know, it, it, that was it. But that's one. part of it. That's a, it's, it may sound small, but that's a sacrifice. And that's exactly. a big that's a big sacrifice. In, in an alternate reality, I almost want to argue that you not being resolved to do what you did would have yielded very different results. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, even me, I knew it, it could because, for you know, normally the older girls, I didn't have to go and pick them from school. They found their way home. But sometimes... I would just... Well, you monitor them on the oh, bus. Oh, I monitor them. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, when they're on the bus, I take the next bus. And, you know... Oh, in Dorchester, you know when the bus will... Yeah, you know, I know, you know when the bus... The bus they, they left one, two, one, and went my the room, route. My room, where we were living before, I could so see the, the bus, bus stop. Okay, bus stop. okay. And even from afar, I could see the, the number on the bus. So, once I know that... What, is it 221 or something like that? Or anyway, bus 34, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would go out, I will come out, go to the bus stop. But clearly, even at night, somewhere when they're coming back, she'll say, I'll yeah, meet you. Meet you. At because, the, at the, uh, she didn't want them no, no, I monitor yeah, them. Yes. I remember some time ago, um, mm. one of them was telling me that, ah, mommy, mommy didn't leave us alone. <laughs> that mom will tell you, tell me the bus number. <laughs> tell me this, this, this. Tell me the And then I remember when the they bus. have parties, 
who, 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 they should eat before they go and then yeah, yeah. they'll go you know <laughs> they really party party. Oh, go my friend's party i'm like come and eat before you go <laughs> they say no it's a party i say hey i'm a eat <laughs> anyway they will get to the party they see crepes and ah, finger food this party? <laughs> they will not come and say mommy they need room have us for that thing this is me you know so they start, even sometimes they will say they are not going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Their mom has given them food, food and, and everything. Yeah, so what yeah. are you going to do? Then, my, you know, because their mom is a baker, they go to parties, they serve them cakes. They be like, oh, no, thanks. Then sleepover. <laughs> I know you want that. You should have a problem. Sleepover. Some parents will come and come and make a case. I remember... You no remember sleepover. That. I, that was one thing Policies. that we had. Oh, you had a policy of no sleepovers? No sleepovers. Right. Parents will come. So maybe that was one of the things, gender, whatever, I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, but generally, yeah. sleepover is not a good thing. That's where people get I into. I didn't do sleepover. No? It's just unsupervised time. Like, exactly. Yeah. So why would I, at the end of the day, you'll not be regretting that. Why did yeah. I allow my daughter to go? Because they say, well, this girl you are going to her house has a brother. Mm-hmm. And how much food do they have in there? Yeah. How much so I, I later found out one day that even the mother that allowed her daughter to have friends over was she was at work oh. so and something terrible happened and i'm like oh god <laughs> this i thought so I basically that was a case study for them i said look yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. you see what happened mm-hmm. to this person mm-hmm. you see why i don't let you go like, okay mommy it's okay it's okay it's okay <laughs> i said if your friend wants to come to my house fine but me or you you are not leaving this house mm-hmm. So there were a lot, they, 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 they kept telling me recently that, ah, mommy, ah, mommy is very, you know, strict. I said, but I'm not strict now. But you had your logic. You had, exactly. you, you know. So, it's, and also, the, the, you know, when we just came here, you know, of course, the accents, you know. They, you know, know as, drop your company you know, at the door. As young children, you know, they, they want to do what their mimic, friends mimic, are doing. Mimic the accents. And I'll be like, hey, when you step out of this house, Pick your British accent. <laughs> when you're coming back, drop it. In this house, There's one day you, got you can speak message. English. You've been speaking English before you left Nigeria. Take B- B- BBC, English. Sky News as so your standard. if you speak, is it the same way the newscaster on BBC mm-hmm. or, or is it Sky speaking? If you cannot speak like that newscaster, <laughs> that's not... You don't, I don't want it here. I'm not... I don't care. You can... You, like, one day I came home... <laughs> I came home one day, and as I was coming in, I it's saw that oh, message. there was a message, and I clicked on the thing, and the first thing I had was mommy, and I listened. Fine, I got the gist of the message, but I was not thinking, who is calling me mommy, <laughs> sending me this message? Of course, I didn't react. It wasn't urgent. It wasn't, it wasn't important. It wasn't urgent. So my daughter came home. They saw her. Oh, mommy, did you... Did you get my message? I said, which message? I, said, I left a voice, voice note. Mail. No, I voice said, mail. oh, it was you. <laughs> Speaking like Oimbo. <laughs> okay. No problem. Oh. oh, I said, because I had mommy. <laughs> and I said, and the rest. Ah, this one is, who is talking? I said, but okay, the message is not urgent. I should be you take the thing to school <laughs> next week. And I said, but this is come. Why did you speak like that? I said it was the environment. She said, mommy. I was with my friends, in, in, from school. and I was with the school, whatever. I used the school phone, right, and he wanted right. me to be speaking. I, I said, okay, like no problem. When you are there, speak like that. <laughs> but when you are in this yeah, house, yeah. Oh, you know when we go to Nigeria, my big crystal, yeah. they don't understand this swear, swear, swear that you are speaking. And you know you work, work with them in the bakery, so I don't want you to go there and make them feel somehow. Mm. So that you see, my daughter. Like you see, oh, guys, oh, guys, they, uh, Madame is being Okay, my, one of one of them. Okay, I remember one of them did internship in <laughs> in in um, a company in in Nigeria. One of the summer holidays, they do internship. So um, so they look well. The staff in that company, they were now gossiping that. That my daughter was well, doing spray spray like they are my dam. Because there was a. There was, the MD of the company came from, from Canada. Me. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> so our daughter that went there to do internship. internship also, you know, from the UK. So probably as the staff were talking to them, they were like, ah, this one said, welcome. They do spray spray like my dam. So that's why I used to tell my daughters that, look, we have, need to connect to people have, at different levels. We have yeah. staff. Mm. And they've known you. Before yeah. you left yeah. Nigeria, mm. and you go back to Nigeria, what do you want? To, you you don't want to go and talk to them like that. 
Yeah. You want to make them feel comfortable yeah. with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what? They are doing your they are doing the they're business helping you, that yeah. is helping you your pay parents bills. pay yeah. your yeah. Yeah. your bills. Yeah. Yeah. So don't go there and because people will just be like, what's wrong with this? Yeah. So we, we give them that balance of when you're relating to, with people, you know, just and, and, and a lot of people in my generation are well versed. We call it code switching. So you switch codes. Yeah, yeah, so, they can do that very yeah, well. Yeah, and you have to be mm-hmm. because if you work in a predominantly, I would say, Caucasian environment, mm-hmm. there's a way you speak. And yeah. if, you, if you're in African spaces, if you go to an Owambe, for example. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, when way you way see you those Nigerian aunties say, New down there. Yeah. yeah. You saw you greet me. And the, 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 the way <laughs> I describe <laughs> it sometimes, <laughs> if you, so I, I leave my house and I'm walking down the road and I see my Nigerian auntie. How I react and respond to her is very different. And two feet forward, I meet somebody yeah, from Caucasian, school. Your neighbor, yeah. Exactly. And it's like, well, you, so you have to. Yeah, it's a yeah. benefit. It's they, a good thing. Of to, course, yeah. That we, I made sure that you know yeah. they, they they got that one yeah. right. Something else that's apparent to me now is the shape of the sacrifice that you both had to make. Is you were here with the kids, but you were you were not with your family, and you had to. Well, not all the time. <laughs> and, and I say that because um, the nature of what I do as a musician involves a lot of travel. And then, you know, but then I, again, like I said, my daughter is only three. But I know the feeling of being away from my family yeah. when I'm not there. And so I, and, I, and I'm seeing that. Me, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Go on. No, I see that as a sacrifice. It's a big sacrifice. It is, it is, you know, it is. I, 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 so what, you want me to tell you my coping strategies? Because I know what you're talking about. I can relate to it. Yeah. So... What you're asking me is like, how did I cope with that stress or that stra- sacrifice? Absolutely, because it is a sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm very honest with you. This is the way I coped with it. Sometimes I lock myself up. I, I, I'll tell you why I, mean I lock myself up. I was in Nigeria, I was walking. So the, the issue... Okay. Okay. On a Friday, for example, from work, I get invited... Uh, out with some people and people are doing all sorts of things and people are sometimes pushing models to me that oh god that baby's for you that's that's a monday to a friday or that's a friday then there's a weekend one so monday to a friday if you work hard you know by the time you get home you just eat dinner and crash yeah. so except there's no light on your generator and switch off like, the weekend one is the one that is more difficult to to cope with so basically which is why i'm talking about migration or living at Walking and then stuff like that. So you need to insulate yourself from, from my faith. There's what they call occasion of sin. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm a I person avoid of, it. avoid occasion of <laughs> sin. You know, it's like um, I'm not good with your bad proverb, but there's also some things that you know. If you're not going to eat something, don't don't. Just if you have it. allergies or, or intolerance, mm. don't take nuts. I, I, I struggle with that, for example. Mm. I can't tolerate not, but sometimes the cash is like, you know, so there's some things, you know, this thing is going to, it's possible could harm me. Mm. So it's a social outing after work or trip. Everybody, it could, it could even happen with bear. Okay. Maybe everybody is taking bear. You know your limits. Mm. People are still going around. Stop. I'll not change to tonic, you know, because I need, I have to drive home or something. And sometimes, even when you're driving home, you're leaving the premises. Some other friends are telling you, oh, Paul, can you help me drop these two ladies? They're my <laughs> friend. They're going in your area. Mm. Now, I, 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 I'm being very honest. Because, like I told you, I'm doing this because I'm in retirement mode and I want people to benefit Absolutely. from my ear. So, so you've gone and then I'm going, oh, hey, okay, guys, you see tomorrow, carry your jacket, you understand? I say, oh, Paul, are you leaving here? Oh, can you see where you're going? So I'm going to Sule, I'm going to like, oh, this my friends are going in that direction. Can you give them a ride or something like that? You know, <clears throat> you could. <clears throat> Innocent enough. And nothing yeah. will happen. Yeah. But if you're bored, you are the only one. Your wife is not, your children is not there. I don't know. That's an occasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how do you deal with things like that? You know, so... You, is did, that one, that you did one before that. <sighs> Oh, you can't feedback. <laughs> okay, don't mind. Don't mind. Don't mind. Don't mind. I, she knows too much about me. Okay, so I left. I ran, and then so I took the the ladies, you know, and I, of course I dropped them and went. So the next time I was in that joint, I was like, ah, Paulo, Leo, that you know, you're not a tough guy, oh. that you know, those babes that you take, they said you didn't even, you know, like you were just very, just very, very, just like, you know. That's a sacrifice. Yeah, I wouldn't that's expect... Ego. That's a sacrifice on the ego. Yeah. Because 
you know, as a, as a guy thing, everybody else telling you that sort of thing will make you feel like you slipped up. But you, even though you have your reasons and you know why you yeah. did it, yeah. just yeah. as a guy thing, yeah. you know, as an ego. Yeah. And then I'll tell you another popular one because it got to a point. Some people accused me that, Paul, your wife is not here. So you love your wife so much. You are not, you know, and I, and I said, I love God mm. more than my wife. I don't want to sin. You know, it is not the love of my wife that is refraining me. It is, I don't want to offend the person I, I owe all my allegiance and my gratitude to. Mm. Because, you know, I, that is another thing about marriage, which is also very co- popular in our culture. I see in the workplace, somebody dies at work. The next of kin, they are putting their mother, their brother. <laughs> and in, international organizations in Nigeria struggle with that. Mm. They've lost their staff. They're trying to help the wife and the children. But the parents and some people are showing up. So some of the company is confused. Who should we give the entitlement to? Mm. Now, some people will have written that they should give it to their mother or to their brother or whatever. And the corporation, the general corporation, from where they've come from, <clears throat> they think it's your wife and your children that need that thing. So there's always that thing about, okay, pleasure and enjoyment. Is it at the expense of my wife or is it to please my wife? No, it's, it's to align with what I've subscribed to. So when I go to the altar and I exchange vows of matrimony, you know, to do this day, to that, da 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 For me, I remember one I don't know what the word is, but you know what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. The vow, yeah. So, you with poor God, mm. you're taking a vow. What you're saying, you're telling God that I'm in this covenant and I want you to bless this covenant, this union. And God is taking it that, okay, it's just like if you do a power of attorney to somebody, say, so, oh, I'm going to Nigeria, I won't be around. This guy will be the signatory for media productions or whatever, any other. So you've given that attorney. So you've got, so, so if they pay that check, you, you, they're not like, so you've got to go to say, hey, Father Lord, you know, this woman you've given me, he's my partner for life and together bless all we do. Mm. Then you now violate, it's like packing ticket <laughs> or you over speed, you know, you, you, and you want blessing. Mm. So, 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 so that's how I struggle with it. So my friends will expect some behavior, but I'll know how I pull back. For, for example, I won't exchange telephone numbers. I'll tell some people that, oh, I'm only here with whatever. Because what tends to happen is Lagos life is a, Lagos night, night life. Because that's the thing, because I know there's no wife and children at home. So the tendency is you don't want to go home. You want to go and yeah. have fun. Now, in that environment where you're having fun, you know, you don't know what could happen. So, so, so what I'm saying, like, first of all, my, my loyalty is to God. Because some people now feel that, I'm a, your, loyalty is to, your, your, loyalty, your loyalty to your wife is out of this world. And I said, it is not about loyalty to my wife. It is about loyalty to a higher person. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it, that, it, that also helped me to manage a lot of things. Mm. Which is also why Prof. Sadeo told you, when Tony was trying to cope with in-laws, when she got married, what was it that Prof. told you? Well, he told me that I don't have any business with anybody that is not my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. Anybody that comes from outside. Mm. I don't... And my father too used to manage that too. When yeah. they had visitors, you know? Yeah, sometimes some visitors will come and my father-in-law will say, don't serve them. Get your staff. staff to come and serve them. And I'll be like, Daddy, why? I said, no, I don't want them to bring you down. I don't want them to, you know, because you know these people. You think, oh, yeah, won't, mm. yeah? You know, so what so, I'm saying that, so my allegiance, you know, in dealing with things that are conflict, mm-hmm. just align your allegiance. Mm. You see, in comp- companies, some companies, while I was working, you're not know, allowed to accept gifts. Mm. In some other banks, you accept every gift. You can take it to your house. You can write about we We put all the gifts together. They now have a raffle and end the draw, you know, and stuff. So, so some people might think, ah, all the hard work I've done. No, I have to take that gold watch. Or I have to take that Rolex. You know, the ethics yeah. that guide profession. So, so what I'm saying, it's always about going back to the, what are the principles driving? I say, we say to people, life is like a laptop. What software are you loading in it? Sure. Is it iOS? Is it, and you can't, or what language, you know? So you, oh, 
Um, so this will probably be my final question, and you're already kind of headed, heading in that direction, which is, so if you had to speak to yourself at 30, say, let's say, what sort of things would you want to have said to that, that man or that woman at 30 or at whatever age? Let's just say between... What I will always say, mm -hmm. and I keep saying to people, is that always know what you want in life. Because if you know what you want in life, you own it. You take responsibility for that thing that you choose or that thing you will choose. Choices. Because if you don't know what you want, you won't know what to choose. Commitment. Mm -hmm. you'll be able to so commitment. once you've chosen it, then you know it's your decision to choose that. So whatever comes out of it, mm -hmm. you can live with it. And then, even if it is painful, if you're living through something painful, you know that you chose it. Then you now rearrange your brain that, okay, that means I didn't really choose right. So now you've learned a lesson. Mm. Going forward, you will, you will choose right because you've experienced pain and you don't want pain next. So always know what. For me, I tell my daughter the same thing. It's the same thing when they're picking spouses or whatever. I'm not going to choose for you. You know what you want. And whatever you choose, live with it. And if you think you cannot live with it, then you know what to do to, to get out of it. Mm. So that's it. Well, I'll build on what Tony has said, you know. Um, that was amazing, Martin. Sorry? No, I was just saying that was amazing. So I would, I, would, I would give it an acronym, DC. She said choice. So I would take the choice to commitment. You see, the reason why we have a lot of issues with commitment, and that's the thing. The problem I have, or the issue, not the problem I have, <laughs> the challenge of the millennial, so that's why I, I mean, yeah. the challenge of the millennial today is about choices and commitments. Because social media, and there's so much knowledge out there, so it's about choices and commitment. But I will go back to that choice. So for me, the, the reason about choices is that if, you, if you've chosen well, Commitment becomes easy. What precedes choice is discernment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it DC? Can discern, you discern? Yeah. Yeah. That is really where youth and millennials have True. a problem. I tell people that too. Discernment, always pray. If you believe in God or whatever you believe in. I was going to say, how, how do we, for, what's another word for discernment? If you don't come from a uh, faith background. You know what Tony said? Okay, wait, I don't want to use faith. But when Tony said, know what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's right. easy to say, yeah. know what you want. Mm, but now I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, you know, as a young boy, did I know what age to get married? Mm. Did I know what course to do? Do so I know which job like to do? good, what is good for you, what is bad for you. Good and bad. Because I have so to make a choice. So that discernment is, a, is, is like something like you can say, okay, this is good, this is not good. Mm. That's mm. where fish, things like fishbone analysis comes in, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, so, so basically, you know, you don't jump to choices. Yeah. It's just like some people, some people say, oh, oh my, my wedding. You know, but for me, like, what's wedding up? What's marriage all about? Mm. What's the outcome you want in marriage? People plan for wedding parties. Yeah. They don't plan for the marriage. Mm. 100%. The same thing you're choosing, you have two job offers. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to break that. I don't want to use the faith. Even though no, I this I mean, yeah, yeah. You have two job offers. Oh, E has just given me a job. And PwC has also given me a job. One is in Lockborough. The yeah. one is in London. Some people go, oh, I'm taking it to my pastor. <laughs> yeah. What way and I say a pastor is, is is a class prefect. A pastor is not God. Mm -hmm. It's a class prefect that is directing the Recently we listened to a video by Professor your professor, you know, like that lady um, philosophy. Sophia Luwali. Sophia Luwali. Mm -hmm. She was talking about Orisha. Mm. And Olon. So Orisha is a Yoruba okay. word. Yeah. So basically, what Yoruba Yemoja on Rumila yeah. that Yoruba people call Orisha. Yeah. The Orisha is not God. Orisha, he said, because one of them it's is from Ofa. One of them is from, not even any G. Mm. What she said was, the human beings like you and I who have excelled. Just like Saint Peter, Saint Paul. Exactly. Saint, okay. You know. Right, 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 right. Oh, I've never heard it. Put, I'll, 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 before you leave, I'll share the. Yeah, it was Professor Sophie Oluwale, Professor of Philosophy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a video I saw yesterday. So, so basically, what I'm trying to say that is like, you know, we all have to deal with um, choices. Mm -hmm. In making, if you make a choice, then you can commit to 
just a lot, just, just a lot of peak history. So you can commit. For me, when I was doing MBA, you know, like I picked accounting as specialty. I came from a background in medical sciences. Of course, I was struggling with accounting. I was using scientific way to, for, to process debit and credit. Do you debit or do you credit? I was trying, but you see, in accounting, is um, is like a language. Mm. Oh, this one, this is the way we treat it. True. So take it like that. I was looking for the scientific <laughs> argument. Mm. Mm. So, so, so if you tell people, young people, about choices, make your choice and whatever, and I said something precedes your choice, is what do you know? So discernment could be knowledge, mm. but now you know what? There's so much information out there that we don't even want to process. I'll confess to you, it was only yesterday I know the difference between PCP and higher purchase. <laughs> and I, 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 it's when you're buying a vehicle, you, you, on the news, PCP, uh, 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 Toyota, Honda, PCP, whatever, da, 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 yeah. mileage 6,000, whatever. So yesterday I came to understand that PCP was a creation of the automobile industry to make buying cars easy for people. So some people need cars only on weekends. So their mileage in a year, in a week, is only Sunday church or whatever. So why do you want to go and pay £30,000 for a car? And the guy is going to live in London for maybe three years or two years or 24 months. And he only needs to wait to go to that. So he goes to a dealership. He said, personal contract purchase. So for his person, his need, my need is I need a car on Sunday. Somebody else needs a car to do school run and work from home. Somebody else doesn't need a car because it works from home or works remotely. So you don't tell them to pay the same £30,000 for a car. Yep. So this guy pays, okay, my mileage in a year will be 6000 Okay, my deposit will be this. So they now, okay, if you're only going to use this car for two years or 36 months, by the time you're returning this car, if you use it the way you say you're going to use it, this car should still have useful life of about 25000 So... We're going to spread your own 5,000 for the period of the year. Yeah. Now, you see, it was only yesterday, even though I worked out to in Nigeria, but there was no PCP in Nigeria. We just have outright sale or higher purchase or, yeah. you know, or leases. Yeah. Now, the UK market has PCP and, well, I can't remember the word, higher purchase. Yeah. But you know, in all my boasting of working out to in finance, but nobody explained it to me. I just got the insight, which is what I'm grateful for, for this stage of my life, that you reflect that nobody sat me down to explain. But somehow God gave me the insight and I understood how they created the PCP thing. And it's all about the news. You want to buy a car, PCP, da, 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 you know? And they were coming. So it's always about how are you going to use your car mm -hmm. in your own case. Mm -hmm. So based on that, it's tailor-made. Mm -hmm. The same is a la carte. You go to a restaurant. Oh, I don't want standard McDonald's, Big Macs, and you know, I want um, chicken nugget and this and stuff like that. Yeah. So I go back to millennials. What I want to leave with millennials is like, I feel for them because there's so much knowledge out there. They were, when we were going to school, there was no Google. We couldn't do homework. With, we had to go to the library. Now you can do homework from your laptop. Yeah. Then I remember when my daughters first started at after that uni, she brought a list of books. She said she wanted to buy all those books for uni. I said, oh, it doesn't work like that. Oh. that I'm, not going to, I'm not going to buy all the books that because you're reading really well. That you know that, how do we call it? It's the way you, sn you snack news. Mm -hmm. That you have to go on and 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 then if you now need to go deep in medical, you now go to the library and pick a book on that particular one. Don't buy. Because she was coming from, oh, primary school, I bought books. Secondary school, I bought books. So that the uni, I have to buy books as well. Mm -hmm. You can't buy books. That, so for millennials, it's like, you make choices, but you need to invest in knowing what you want to choose mm. so that you can have a good commitment to that choice. Or oh, a good outcome as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to say a massive thank you. Um, this has been so, so I can't even begin to process it, but there's been so many nuggets and so many useful things that I think are not only a benefit to me, but I think to everybody listening. Um, and I think, yeah, that's... There's, I've been trying to look for a jumping off point because there's so much to tap into. And even now, I feel like we could still speak for another hour. Um, but yes, thank you so much for everything, for the conversation. Right. Is a, it, it's, it's our pleasure. We're really, really uh, proud of, you know, um, your mission and your, I don't know what your vision is, but I, I've seen your mission, you know, I've met your family and um, I'm very proud of what you're doing. 
and I wish you the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to my wonderful guests. Thank you to the other layers. And thank you to yourself for listening. If you're here and if you've caught up on both episodes, I want to say a massive, massive thank you. Now, don't forget to like, share, and interact with us on whatever platform that you're listening on. And until the next time, we have some other amazing, amazing conversations yet to come. Um, Stay tuned, subscribe, and spread the good word. All the love. Peace and love.